Hey guys, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization and Juggernaut Training Systems, continuing with our hypertrophy guide, bicep time, the broiest of all the muscles, I think, although chest may be close. So let's take a look. First up is volume. Maintenance volume is the amount of volume we have to do in order to at least keep the biceps the same size as they've always been. This comes in handy if we're, for example, prioritizing another body part, like really trying to work on back, triceps, chest, and legs, and that takes up pretty much all of our recovery, so we have to put some other body parts on the back burner, biceps being one of them, for example. It says here that the maintenance volume is between zero and around four to six sets. Why the discrepancy? Here's the deal. If you have been training biceps for a long time, maybe you're even a bodybuilder, so you have particularly big biceps and you've invested a lot of time into them, training them by themselves for a long time, you're probably not gonna be able to get away with doing no bicep work directly at all and keeping them the same size, which is an MV of zero. You might need about four to six sets. On the other hand, if you're an intermediate to lifting, maybe if you come from a strength sports background and just wanna get a little bit more jacked, uh, powerlifting or strongman or something like that, and if your program has a lot of pulling in it already, a lot of rowing, a lot of pull downs, a lot of pull ups, the biceps get a ton of work like that to begin with. So you might actually be able to get away with no bicep training directly at all and still maintain their size. Where on that spectrum you lie is gonna depend on your own uh, sort of figuring out how much bicep you need or bicep volume you need to keep the biceps the same size. You'll kind of know this if you get away from bicep training for one or two months and maybe train two sets uh, directly of biceps per week and your biceps didn't get any weaker and maintain their strength right about the same, eh, you're probably maintaining just fine. If you lose bicep ability, you might need to do more during maintenance phases. Next up, minimum effective volume for biceps. For individuals that have been training it for quite a while, remember the beginner's minimum effective volume is one set per week, but intermediates and above, folks have been training three years and more. Usually uh, anything below eight sets per week is just not guaranteed to get your biceps hit well enough to for sure get them to grow. So minimum effective volume, now remember, there's variance about this. Some people it's four sets, some people it might be 12. On average, it tends to be about eight sets of biceps directly per week. How would that look? That could be like four sets of barbell curls on Monday, four sets of uh, you know cable curls on Thursday. That's an example of how to get eight working sets of biceps per week. That's direct work. Maximum adaptive volume is somewhere between minimum effective, maximum recoverable. It's where you get, on average, most of your best growth. Most people will get their best bicep growth somewhere between 14 and 20 sets per week. Now, let's talk about the MRV, maximum recoverable volume, because that's what really matters is minimum effective volume and then maximum recoverable and working within that range. Some of that or a lot of that will be your uh, maximum adaptive volume. MRV for biceps is somewhere between 20 and 26 sets for most people. Now, remember, it's most. You may be the individual that can do 32 sets per week and recover just fine. You may be a person that after 15 sets per week, your biceps start to fall off and you experience tendon problems, all this other stuff. 20 to 26, why that kind of big range, even for an average estimate, is because if you do a lot of pulling movements in your program, your bicep MRV, even if it's pretty moderate, if it's normally like 28 or 26 sets without a lot of pulling volume, if you put in a lot of bent rows and pull-ups into your program, then you're going to experience a, a lowering of your bicep MRV because those exercises already tax your biceps a lot. On the other hand, if you don't have a ton of pulling in your program for whatever reason, maybe you're not prioritizing it, then you may be on the higher end of whatever your particular MRV is. Remember, all of these volume landmarks are just averages for you to start thinking about and experimenting within your program. You track your performance and your results to make sure that you're actually getting those volume landmarks correctly. Next up, intensity. Really pretty simple here. Eight to 15 reps on average with challenging weight. Can you do bicep training heavier? Yes, but an isolation exercise trained much heavier than eight reps tends to endanger you as far as injury is concerned. And here's another really cool point. If you wanna stimulate the faster twitch muscle fibers, real heavy work, even if you benefit from that a lot, you can do it safely through compound exercises that involve the bicep. For example, in triceps, why is there no real reason to do overhead tricep extensions super heavy? Because shoulder presses overhead can be done super heavy, tax the triceps a ton with really high force, but in a much more safe manner. Just the same way, if you want to train your biceps very heavy, do underhand chin-ups or pull-ups or even pull-downs for sets of five to eight reps. Perfect, and it's compound, so if something's a little bit off with your bicep, you can shift the force to the lat or other pulling muscles without a risk of injury. For isolation work, anything above eight reps is probably a safe bet and heavy enough that if you really respond to the heavy work. 
all the way up to 15 reps is totally cool. Some individuals can go 15 reps and higher. The biceps, like a lot of upper body musculature, tend to be a little bit more fast twitch on average, interestingly enough, than maybe even the legs. So much about 15, you'll notice your biceps just get tired, unless we're doing special metabolite techniques, which we'll talk about later. So most of your bicep works, I recommend, start in the eight to 15 range and work through that range. If you have multiple mesocycles, like we'll talk about later, or even multiple training days per week, to do different rep ranges, you'll probably be benefiting the most from that variety. Exercise selection. What are the kinds of exercises that we wanna build our bicep routine around. To be honest, I've trained for a long time, I've trained a lot of folks, and it's tough to beat barbell curls. If your barbell curls give you wrist trouble or elbow trouble, which sometimes they do just because you have to turn completely supinated, you can try the easy bar and that fixes a lot of problems. Barbell curls are great, easy bar curls are great, dumbbells are good, cable curls can be a tool in the toolbox, especially if you like to use some variation. Can you do weird angles and machines and spider curls? Absolutely, but here's the deal. You want big arms, barbell curl, easy bar curl, a lot of weight for around 10 reps. If that weight moves up, you're gonna guarantee yourself bigger arms. You can get fancy, but make sure that the fanciness isn't the base of your program. Stick to the basics and you'll uh, probably have really, really good results. What about variation? So we already talked about exercise variation. That's absolutely a type of bicep variations. For example, if it, you're getting stale with barbell curls, replace them with dumbbell curls. If those are getting stale, replace them with cable curls. But that's not the only way to vary in biceps. There's also loading variation. Some days of the week or some mesocycles, you could do sets of eight. Some other days of the week, you could do sets of 12 or sets of 15 and so on and so forth. So for example, if you train biceps heavy on one day of the week, just a day or two later, they may be ready to train again. Your muscles may be healed, but your connective tissues still aren't completely healed. You might not want to risk making something worse by going heavy again. So you go heavy one day, rest one or two days, and then go lighter for higher reps. It's not going to risk your connective tissues, but it's still going to hit your biceps again. It's an excellent use of variation for loading. We can also have a volume and relative intensity variation between different days. For example, let's say that it's time for you to hit biceps, Let's say it's a Wednesday, but you know that on Friday you have a, a really hard pulling workout coming up. So you might not want to hit biceps totally hard because that could interfere with your pulling workout on Friday. So what you can do is lower the volume, like instead of doing five sets of biceps like you normally do per workout, do three, or the relative intensity. Instead of going anywhere between four from fail to one to fail, which is where you should usually be training, close to failure proximity, um, maybe just keep that whole workout for the entire mass cycle, like four or three from fail. Never really pushing it, so that you still get a good stimulus, but not so good that it still fatigues you on Friday. So hit it Wednesday just a little bit, hit it Friday for the big pulling movements, and then maybe Sunday you can hit a really big bicep workout, really burn it out, and that'll get you uh, all the way back to Wednesday, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of variation there. I will tell you this, full range of motion is a really good idea for biceps. Why? Biceps have a couple of functions. One is that they supinate, right? So they turn your wrist up like this. Another one is that they flex the forearm, and a third one that's not very commonly known is that they actually flex the shoulder. Right? The biceps contribute to this movement right there. Does that mean that you have to take all of your curls to your face? No, but you should at least take your curls all the way up and down. A lot of folks will start to heave and hoe, right? And start cheating and stuff like that. You're not even working your biceps anymore. You're working your glutes, your lower back. You got days, you got workouts for that. Keep the bicep training to the bicep. Is full range of motion training with a big stretch and a big contraction shown to be more productive? Absolutely, the science is crystal clear on that. Does it insult your ego a bit? Yes. Do you have to curl a lot less weight? Yes. The good news is it's not gonna injure you as much, it's not gonna fatigue the rest of your body. When you're training biceps and you wanna train them properly because you want big arms, check your ego at the door, it always, always works. What about frequency? How often do we have to train our biceps in order to get best results? Here's the deal. There's a big variance, so some people fatigue a lot from biceps training, some not a lot. But very few people fatigue so much from bicep training that they can only train biceps in an overloading style once a week. So almost everyone can train biceps hard at least twice a week. A lot of folks can train it a lot more than that. Also, if you reduce the uh, volume per workout, you can do more workouts, potentially if you want. If you recover very quickly and you only do a couple of sets per workout, you can train biceps six days a week. I always recommend at least one day for sort of more full recovery to start the next week and you should be taking a day off of lifting weights anyway once per week for full sort of systemic recovery. 
You can train bicep six days a week. Now, can most people survive it? Yeah, if they lower the volume enough. Is it the most productive thing for most people? No, because then your individual workouts aren't hard enough to really stimulate much, especially for advanced individuals. But a lot of folks are gonna be finding that they can recover just fine and get their best gains from three and four days of training per week and some even five. So be more open-minded about biceps frequency. The bro split works okay for the bigger muscle groups, back, chest, et cetera, legs, because they take a long time to heal anyway. Biceps, you'll find really, really good results if you up your frequency. That might actually allow you to raise your total volume a bit too. And you may uh, be a benefactor and, or a beneficiary and then have much, much bigger arms uh, months and years down the line. Periodization. What? There's periodization for biceps. That's weird. Well, there's periodization for everything, right? There are many, many ways to periodize bicep training. An effective one is by spending a couple of mesocycles, one or two, heavy bicep training, sort of in the 8 to 10 range, maybe 8 to 12. After that, you need more volume because volume is the predominant stimulus for growth to grow. So you switch to a more volume style. You might increase the number of sets you're doing, but you might also increase the number of reps, maybe something between 12 to 15, 10 to 15 reps. So the averages move up a little bit over these mesocycles. After that, you're gonna to want to do sort of a superlative stimulus, really burn things out. That's when you get to do metabolite style training, which is usually 15 to 20 plus reps, usually short rest to sum up a really nasty pump and burn. The thing is, that kind of training tends to fizzle itself out. It gets stale rather quickly, probably a mesocycle or a month of training into that. After that, you just don't really get much of a pump or a burn from that kind of stuff. You just get tired. So it's cool to use every now and again at the end of a phase of periodization. After that, you're going to want to do low volume maintenance level for biceps, probably the rest of your body too if your training is con uh, co sort of conjoined together well. And then after a month of that, your body's really, really recovered you're not used to high volumes anymore, and you can start ramping back up heavy, then volume, then metabolite, so on and so forth. So multiple months are spent in this uh, kind of framework, recycle, and then come back to the old stuff. Speaking of metabolites, what are some special metabolite techniques that we can use for biceps? Well, I'll tell you what. One of the most popular ones that's easy to pull off, especially with cables and machines, is drop sets. So basically you put your 12 RM into the cable for biceps and you do something like, you know, 10 to 12 reps, get really, really good pump, really good burn, rack the weight without waiting a bit. You take the uh, selector out and put it down one or two weight stacks lighter. So if say hundred pounds the first time, you put it down to 90 or 80, put it into 90, get the bar again, the total rest, maybe between 10 and 20 seconds between when you put it down, reach the selector. Okay. I'm not dying. Grab the bar again. Do as many as you can again, or close, one or two reps away from failure, and then so on and so forth, five or six times, you'll get a crazy pump, crazy burn, great metabolite tool. Another thing you can do for biceps that doesn't work for all muscles is occlusion training. You basically tie off with either a special rubber band or a sock or something like that, right at the distal end of the limb, or sorry, proximal end of the limb right here. So you tie off between your shoulder and your bicep, nice and tight, and then you do a whole bunch of curls, short rest, pretty close to drop sets, but you can use the same weight if you want, and the summation of metabolites or many other factors could be involved. You get a really gnarly pump and a potentially lot of growth stimulus. Now, the thing is, those special metabolite techniques, they're super fun. They get you amped up. They don't work consistently for a long period of time. So save them for just every now and again, I would say once every several months. And the rest of the time, stick to the basics for bicep training. Folks, see you next time for the next hypertrophy guide.